Hello, this is Sart with Mythic MTG Tech number 360, doing a deck tech on show and tell from a 1K winner here in the Seattle area. Crazy cool deck, very, very competitive nationally and locally. Uh, big thanks to Tom Lynch, whose deck list I'm sharing here. He took the deck recently to uh, GP Santa Clara in a team event and just tore it apart with a crushing record there. I've known Tom for a long time. I loaned him a vintage deck a few years back uh, to play over in GP Portland. A uh, more recent photo of him there with the dog really emphasizes that he is going to be the next Brian Kibler. Incredible player. Cool. The combo here is basically get show and tell, put omniscience or emmer cool in play, and crush your opponent. I'm going to go into detail about this a little more. It's actually a lot more complicated than that because there are so many different options and different wing conditions overall. But basically, show and tell and sneak attack are broken cards and when backed up by force of wills and a bunch of cantrips, you cannot lose. Here's the full deck. It is a complicated deck. There's some one-ofs in here. There's cunning wishes. There's really a barrier of entry based on cost. The cost to this deck is just crazy. It's about two and a half, almost $3,000. This is the budget version of the deck is $2.7,000 for this deck. Why is it so expensive? The reserve list, Volcanic Islands alone, a set of three of them to play this deck is about a thousand dollars that is the budget version you could pay five thousand dollars a piece for betas there are no alphas of volcanic island uh, they didn't get the artwork in early enough and it never made it on the original printing sheet for alpha but it was added to the beta sheet volcanic island is really the best dual land currently uh, underground sea is up there in equal price but volcanic island is seeing more play in vintage and more play specifically in legacy where people still play a lot of dual lands the other high-end cards though are not cheap force of wills you must have a play set to play this and scalding tarns are an absolutely required card you need to be able to fetch the basics and you need to reshuffle your deck you need to reshuffle it a lot for consistency reasons, you cannot skip playing the fetches here. Ponder, Preordain, Brainstorm, Impulse, all of these cards do beautiful things in increasing the consistency of this deck. And that is why this deck is so good. Yes, it's got some speed, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but the consistency is what makes this deck so strong. It's also got basics. So a tier one deck, that not only is safe from Blood Moons, but plays Blood Moon itself is just wonderful in my book. Punish the other greedy decks while playing basics yourself. The speed in this deck is overwhelming. You can often go off on turn one, turn two, or turn three, even with backup counter spells. This is what makes this deck so difficult to deal with. The hand destruction decks must go after you right away and often need backup dazes or forces in order to keep you off of your plan. The cunning wish in here is also just really, really useful. You've got a sideboard that is full of answers and full of pieces for your combo. You can, with omniscience in play, play your cunning wish, go get a fire mines, foresight, go get the other pieces that you need, and finish your combo very, very easily. There are creative wins in here also. You've got omniscience, so you can just drop an Emrakul, but you've also got release the ants, which is going to let you crush your opponent one point at a time. You put the Emrakul on top of your deck and win the clashes and kill your opponent. There's search cards also that enable that, and Brainstorm even lets you put back your cards like Emrakul or Gristlebrand when they're not needed, so you can find the counter spells or combo pieces that you absolutely must have. The cards to cheat things in in this deck are very consistent and not very difficult to cast. Show and tell being the best, sneak attack is very, very strong. Sneak attacking an Emrakul will occasionally win for you, but more likely you're gonna put out Gristlebrand, attack, do some damage, gain some life, draw a huge amount of cards and combo off either that turn or the following turn. Firemines, Foresight, 
fun card. You're not going to manually cast it. You've got omniscience, but it lets you get control. It lets you get search cards. It lets you get filtering cards. It's really, really flexible in this deck. Tips from Tom. He's actually got a full article that he wrote for this video. I'm posting the full article in the comments. Please read it. Lots of useful tips in there, but the three that I'm pulling out that you really, really need to pay attention to is try not to sideboard very hard. This deck is already awesome and consistent. You pull out too many combo pieces to put in sideboard answers and you get to play defense and lose the game. Play very aggressively versus almost all matchups. If you've got the combo, you might as well give it a try. If you've got counter spells to back it up, then definitely do it and play the odds. When you are searching for cards, know what cards are still left in your deck. Know what the odds are to find a card. Know if you need to reshuffle or not. Understanding statistics helps you with this deck significantly. What video would you like to see next? I know it's been a little while since I've been doing videos. I've got a plan to do at least weekly videos for the next two months. And if I get time, significantly more. Thank you to everybody who's over there on Patreon supporting this channel. Thank you so much. I've redone my Patreon entirely. If you're interested in supporting the channel, check it out. Thank you to Chess.com, who is a sponsor of this channel. And until next time, choose the cards wisely.